Hey all, I wanted to give you a brief how-to on weighted overlay, especially when you're creating an issue map or a suitability map. Let me talk you through what I've got here before we, uh, we get started. Uh, the issue I'm going to be addressing is site accessibility for new mines, um, new excavation areas for mining. Um, uh, accessibility to me means how close I am to some existing infrastructure, so existing roads, quarries, and mills. Uh, so the first thing I did is create some distance measurements from those. Now, I did a really simple version of it. I did uh, Euclidean distance. So let's let's take a look at roads for an example. So I took the mining roads. I turned them into lines because they were actually polygons. I took the existing roads. I merged them together, and I created a new feature class called All Roads. Um, then I ran Euclidean distance on All Roads and created a road a new layer called Distance from Roads. Um, I was writing all my outputs to a a Scratch geodatabase. I just created a geodatabase called Scratch and literally wrote them out. So let's bring in uh, distance from roads. Um, so it's a little bit hard to see with this uh, with this color scheme. Let's just, just get something a little bit more colorful. There we go. So you can kind of see the darker red areas are closer roads. The blue areas are far are farther from existing roads, right? But this, this was in a measure of distance, and what I actually wanted was a measure on a value, a planning value from 1 to 9. So I went in and I reclassified my roads uh, based on distance segments. So I started out with a 0 to 50 meters and gave that the high high, so it's highly proximal, so high high value. 50 to 100, I gave it the high. And then you'll notice as I go, as I get farther away from the road, the, my increment increases. So first I'm incrementing by 50, then by 100, then by 150, then by 200. So as, as I get farther away, my value uh, decreases. So I've, I've got kind of a tapering loss of value as I get farther away from the roads. Um, and again, I'm using this 1 to 9 scale. One key thing to remember, we're doing raster analysis here. So look at your model properties. You want to make sure your processing extent is set. Um, you want to make sure your raster analysis settings. Actually, here's one I forgot. Output coordinates. Um, you want to set your output coordinate system. So look at your values. Here's my uh, output coordinate system. I'm just going to leave it same as inputs in this case. My extent. I actually used my, uh, my study area boundary as my extent. That's what gave me these numbers. Raster analysis, I'm going to use 30 meters because I think that's enough resolution for the kind of decision making I'm making. And then uh, I set my mask uh, to my study area boundary as well because I don't, I don't need to calculate anything outside of that. So yeah, so let's, uh, let's actually just run all of these. This is Model Builder, right? So there's a button up here called Run. Always make sure to save your models before you run them. Um, if you, especially if you've made changes, Model Builder has a tendency to crash and you don't want to lose the changes you've made if you run it and it crashes. Um, it's always a bummer. So, creating some rasters. I, I treated uh, the quarries and the mills the same way, right? So I did a um, Euclidean distance from them and then a reclassification. Mills, same thing, Euclidean distance, reclassification. I use different breaks um, for for those pieces of data than I did the uh, the other ones. So let's take in a sec. So I might speed this up. Uh, sometimes geoprocessing takes a little while. Okay, so there we go. So my outputs here of the reclassification, I call it proximity to mills, proximity to queries, and proximity to roads. Let's just go ahead and drop in proximity to roads. Um, OK, 
Okay. You notice it gets a random color scheme to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out something a little bit more representative. So here, proximity. Darker means higher proximity, lighter means less. So let's drop in proximity to mills. Um, okay, go to properties. Again, change the color scheme. I'll use this uh, white to blue. Darker blue means closer to a mill. Lighter blue means less. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and make it 30% transparent. Right, so we can see through it and see where we have roads and close to mills. And let's drop in the proximity to the quarries. Right. Same thing, symbology. Uh, let's pick a color. Oop. Like uh, white to green. Okay, so dark green means close to a quarry, light green means far. And again, I'm going to go to display and set the transparency to 60%. All right, so this gives us a rough sense of, of what our overlay will eventually look like when we do a weighted overlay and combine these together. Um, but not exactly, because we're actually going to be applying importance ratios uh, to each of the layers. So let's, let's go back into the model builder. So I want to do a weighted overlay to create an issue map called uh, site, site Accessibility for Mines. So handy dandy search tool. I do weighted overlay. Here's my weighted overlay tool. I just drag it into model builder. There's this little connect tool. Select that. All right. So I'm going to collect my proximity to mills, proximity to queries, and proximity to roads into this weighted overlay tool. The influence is right here. So this is which of these layers is making the decision. The sum of the influence also has to be uh, 100%. You also notice it carried the the values, uh, these planning values from our source data. You could change those planning values actually here in the weighted overlay, or you could reverse their scale. There are some situations you might be including something um, where even though it's a one to nine, for instance, let's say you included habitat sensitivity and you were doing a mineral resource. Well, that's a bad example. Let's say you're doing a mine site suitability map, but you were including habitat sensitivity you wouldn't want high habitat sensitivity areas to have a high value for a mine site selection. So you might actually invert the planning value scale. But in this case, we've made everything high is good in all cases. So we're just gonna leave our planning values the same, our inputs and uh, our, uh, what we're gonna use to process the scaled values is exactly the same. Okay, so proximity to the mills, proximity to the queries, and proximity to roads are our three input layers. So I actually think proximity to mills is the least important of these values. Um, uh, I would give it, uh, I think it's um, a value. If I said, if I was comparing these things, I would say that proximity to roads is probably three times as important as proximity to the mills. Um, so I, if I give it 20%, right, and I stick to my guns here and I say I want rows to be three times, right, that's going to be 60. So I have 20 left over that I could uh, give to quarries. Um, you know what, I want quarries to be slightly more important, so I'm going to give it a 50. Actually for roads, quarries will be worth 30%. Right, so I have a 50, 30, 20 split. I'm going to call this output, um, actually, I'm not going to put it in my scratch. I made another geodatabase called results. I'll call it mine site accessibility. Go ahead and hit save that. Okay, remember save before you run. I'll resort my model, re auto layout it, recenter it. Let's run this weighted overlay. Okay, and I'm going to right click on it and add the results to the map. So there is my mine site accessibility. Red areas are low value uh, because they're ones. Green areas are high value. 
So these are the areas that are most accessible uh, for mine site development. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let me, you know what, one, just one briefly. Here's, here's that model. I'm going to full size it. You can take a look at, at how I did that. Um, and remember, don't don't forget those environment settings. You can set them for the whole model. You can set them on an individual tool, but it's easiest to set them for the whole model. But either way works. Okay, good luck.